Hello, friends. Hello, 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 friends. A tradition unlike any other. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. In your life have you seen anything like that? There it is! Adam Scott, a life changer. Mashed potato! Here it, here it, here it, here it comes. The team at Cobra Golf are set to introduce additions to its collection of king putters, making the offerings available in a sleek black colorway, the perfect complement to the limited edition black LTDX drivers and king black wedges. The lineup of black putters includes both king 3D printed and king vintage series models, along with two new mallet styles, the king Cuda and Cuda 40. All King Collection putters come standard with the Cobra Superstroke Traction Tour 2.0 grip and KBS Tour 120 shaft. The new additions to the King 3D printed and vintage series will be available from July this year. For more information on the entire King family of products, visit cobragolf.com. This is the 19th T podcast. Kieran Marsh, Nathan Drudy back with you for another week. Drew, it's a bit of a bit of an apology from me off the very top. Uh this is a classic case of you would have thought I've learned the lesson, you know, best part of 300 episodes into this journey of never promising someone until it's in the can, um, never never advertising a guest well ahead of time until you've actually yeah. locked the interview in. In fact, even recorded it and put it away, edited, ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I speak, of course, to Cassie Porter. We flagged that one last week after her maiden professional victory at the Melbourne International La Trobe. Uh, absolutely no fault of Cassie's. Completely my fault, actually. Um, just mismanaged my time. That's unlike me. <laughs> on assignment in uh, Western Australia. Uh, so that didn't come last week as promised, but it is coming down the pipeline at yeah. some stage. Uh, so remain in uh, contact with Cassie. We'll find a, a, a night that works. But yeah, I just want to apologize off the top. Uh, I'd like to hold myself accountable to you and our, our fantastic family of loyal <laughs> listeners. So. Just want to put that out there early. Um, plenty to get through. I will mm. flag you. Uh, I don't uh, have a television uh, or the technological now to run two screens at a time in my spare room slash recording studio here, but you are, in fact, watching live um, mm. the final round of the DP World Tour event in Abu Dhabi. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will have dated by the time people are listening to this, but interesting things happening. Uh, Patrick Reid sits... Equal top, is that correct, with Rory McIlroy? Yes. Yeah, just uh, made a very good five-footer for par, unfortunately. Okay, so he's going off to the 18th. Rory teeing off on the 17th. Correct. I'll bring uh, you I'll bring you highlights as they come to hand. Please do, because there's obviously a, a, a massive sub-narrative between those two players, <laughs> but only in the last uh, 24 hours you'd have to be living under a rock to not realise that there's been another alleged... Uh, uh, rules infraction by Patrick Reed, which we'll get to at the back end of this episode. So plenty of stories surrounding the final couple of holes there in Abu Dhabi and Druids will bring us the latest as it happens. Um, we will lead off, though, with the event here that happened over the weekend. Druids TPS Victoria mm. at the Rosebud Country Club, hosted by Jeff Ogilvy, And a remarkable win, uh, a maiden victory and a remarkable win for Min Ayun, the Korean, who is, uh, it's like a shooting star, Drew. It's, I, I'll hand on heart say I not had much knowledge of Min Ayun all that long ago. And by virtue of just piling up a couple of results in the last, you know, couple of months, she has rocketed, uh, you know, to the front of people's attention, particularly here across the Australian summer dreads. And just, uh, really kind of cruised to victory after the, making the turn. I mean, I know there were people on her tail, uh, of course, uh, James Marcasani, Elvis Smiley, Dave Michaluzzi, uh, Barbieri was there uh, as Rory McIlroy. Um, yes, Rory, he's driven the green. St- <laughs> stick that up your ass, Patrick. Um, on the 17th as well, which is yeah. controversial, the centre of controversy at present. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so just... You know, she had a, a number of players right on her tail. And, um, yeah, it, I just kind of cruised to victory with a Sunday 63, if you don't mind. Like, yeah, it was mm. it was very, very impressive. And and I think if you – what makes it even more impressive, if you look at the group of players um, who finished 
behind her, and and I don't want to uh, ever talk down on previous leaderboards, but this is quite a impressive leaderboard. If if you just allow me to run down very quickly to prove the point, Marcusani, Smiley, Migaluzzi, Barbieri, Brett Coletta, Kevin Wan, Jake McLeod, Lincoln Ty, Kiriaku, Sarah Jane Smith, Justice Bozio, John Lyris. That's the top ten, and mm. Minay Yoon has come in and beaten a lot of them, and that's unbelievably impressive. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. I, I, neither of us would have picked this as a, as a victor. Uh, in fact, neither of fact, us we did. didn't. We didn't. So I picked Michalucci. You picked. Who did you go for in the end? Uh, uh, Dan Lawson. Dan Lawson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> who I'm not sure actually made the cut. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, it was just just. just really consistent solid golf and and it looked at times like Elvis Smiley just really charged home with a 63 as well and yeah it, it, there were so many little narratives happening throughout the day but uh yeah the the honors go to the uh the South Korean and 20 during uh the week of the tournament only the third female to win uh, a mixed gender event internationally uh, which is remarkable and also included a hole in one um, mm. during proceedings. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, incredibly well done. Uh, and I thought, you know, um, to your point, a young, young, uh, young player early in their career doing it away from home, uh, you know, surrounded by a bunch of quality players, um, you know, a bunch of winners on the tour, not only mm. this summer, but previously as well. So, Certainly a name to watch, I think, as we move forward. I mean, it's a handy uh, factory, South Korea, for women's golf, uh, increasingly for men's golf, as it turns out as well. So she comes from a, a, a rich uh, part of the world as it relates to talent uh, on the golfing scene. But Min Yoon, as you say, is uh, a star on the rise and certainly played incredibly well, I think, to um, 63 on a Sunday is outrageously impressive. So. Yeah, deserves every bit of congratulations that's coming her way after an impressive win over, again, as you said, an impressive field. Dave Michaluzzi was my tip to win. Um, he yes. finished uh, in a tie for third, had a real good look at taking the victory at one point, and I think may have even moved into a share or, or just one shot off and uh, couldn't tighten the screws enough to to get over the line, but extends his lead at the top of the uh the order of merit, um, I, I say top. He's actually second behind Cam Smith, but as uh, everyone who listens to this show would know that we are removing those kind of irrelevant to the conversation. There was a, an interesting sort of little sub story that happened. Uh, I don't know if you caught this on Twitter. You, you probably did. Uh, and that's Jeffrey Guan didn't play in mm. this event. Now, he played uh, in the penance final, I believe, at number one. He uh, did. And beat his opponent uh, 10 and 8. Uh, Correct. A la Tiger Woods, Stephen Ains. Um, now, someone on Twitter asked if there was a reason why he wasn't playing in the TPS event. And and our good friend and and uh, arguably the, the driver of the Jeffrey Guan fan bus, uh, Ewan Porter, got on and sent a very cryptic tweet that basically said that he knew the reason, but he couldn't say publicly what it was. So uh, that was just a, a little interesting tidbit that kind of came at the end of uh, at the end of the tournament that I thought was worth mentioning. Mm. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? I'm just trying to look through the field now and see. Uh, pa- uh, just... pa- Patrick Reed has hit the fairway on 18. That's a shame. Um Justice Bozio, the highest finishing amateur, the Queenslander at T9 at 17 under. Mm. So, I mean, there definitely were Connor Fuchs, amateur, Caitlin Pro here. So, definitely are the amateurs there. You have to think it's not like an invitation thing, surely. The it's... only th- thing, the o- and this is me uh, having. Speculating? A, yeah, speculating, that's the word, thank you, um, is that he's turned pro. It's the only thing that I can think of and that essentially the paperwork has been filed um, and it just hasn't been announced 
yet and perhaps there was some status thing that was keeping him from essentially being in the uh in the field but what i will do while you chat uh, i will look at the entries for this week's event just in murray ray let uh, me filibuster let me waffle uh, he's not in you check. he's Bigger. not in he's not in the field this week okay and where do we go after cobram baruga uh, all right settle down where is he going to pop up first as a pro well, I don't blame him for not playing the Murray River event as his first event as a professional, just quietly. We then go to the Vic Open. Oh, there we go. There we go. Or does yeah. he do it in his hometown at TPS Sydney at Bonnie Dern? I don't think he... If he's turned pro, you're not missing a state open. Where's the Vic Open being played? Is that down at 13th? 13th, yeah. And it's the yeah, biggest think... prize pool that we've got left that's not a national open. Yeah, so there you go. Are we prepared to say, it? as reported by the nineteenth day, Jeffrey Guam will make his first appearance as a professional? At the How Vic old Open is he? Seventeen? Eighteen? Uh, no, well, I hope he's not seventeen because he's enjoyed a frothy or two in recent Instagram posts. I'm pretty sure he's just turned eighteen. I think it's just turned eighteen. Anyway, so, um, Rory McIlroy is putting for eagle. Quite long range, big, big yeah. putt here. But just get this close, Rory. Just get it close. Yeah. Oh, Rory, he's left it well short, has he? Go. Go. He's got five foot for birdie. Okay, that's doable. Come that's on, Rory. Doable. Um, so just briefly working our way down the leaderboard from TPS Victoria, you mentioned um, uh, James Marcazzani, impressive. Mm. Um, I mean, shoots a 69 on a Sunday and, and you know, loses by one. So that's tough. Um, that's Shoot, tough. Elvis shoots three, three sub sixty six rounds and doesn't win. Correct. and doesn't <laughs> win. That's yeah. You 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 don't have to be dead to be stiff. Uh, Elvis Smiley is the best golf I've seen him play all summer. Um, mm. We know it's there, so it's great to see it emerge. Uh, Mika, to your point, I wonder how far he would have only increased his lead. I would assume at the cumulative score to par across the summer. Oh, I'd suggest so. Um, if yeah, I wasn't watching the golf on my phone, I would tell you. <laughs> One I want to call out. Um, sorry, two. In fact, I want to call out. Um, neither of them were my tip. Dane Lawson um, did, in fact, finish T27 okay. at, tw- at 12 under. So, respectable. Um, two people I did call out prior to the tournament, though, who I do want to make specific mention of now. The first finished in a tie for seventh at 18 under, six strokes off the winner. And that was Jake McLeod, mm. uh, who started with a 63. So it was he and Mark Azani um, who led us through the opening day, uh, both shooting, and Jack Munro, for that matter, uh, all three shooting a 63. But Jake McLeod is in good touch, mm. and I really, really like to see it. Because I, yeah, there's a soft spot there. I think not just from me. I think from this podcast in general for for young Jake, and he's been in the wilderness to be honest. Um, so you know, 63, 66, 67. He'd be a bit disappointed falling away with 70 on Sunday, but that's good enough for a tie for seventh. Get some points uh, in the order of merit, and good to see him trending in the right way. The second person uh, is a person I said I was very curious to see because we just hadn't seen her for a while, and that's Steph Kiriakou. Mm. Uh, similarly, T9. She's a shot back from Jake. 17 under. A little bit more consistent across the board. 68, 66, 67, 66. Good stuff from Steph. And I'd like to think that, you know, she'll float whether or not she stays the remainder of the entire summer now in Australia. But it's definitely a couple of events coming up where you'd expect to see her play. So, um, Rory Birdie pumping fist. Birdied. Okay. Shove that up your shirt. Pat, um, that's good news. So Rory's a shot ahead. Is that correct? Correct. Walking to the Reed's, tee on eighteen. Reed yet to approach eighteen. Green. In the fairway, though. In the fairway, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, but Rory's got a shot up. So those are probably my two dudes that I wanted hmm. to call out. There were a couple of names just briefly before I pass the baton back to you to give us any further thoughts on the TPS Victoria event. A couple of names surprisingly missed the cut. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Baz, Hayden Barron. I mean, mm. two under is not terrible. They missed the cut. Um, but, yeah, I was a little surprised given his recent form. Uh, Jeff Ogilvy missed the cut in his own event. It's tough for Jeff. Uh, <laughs> no, Brutal. Uh, I, I, yeah, look, I, I jest. That's that's not bad. And Quayley was the other one because I talked Quayley up mm. the Lux. I said he's coming in red hot form off the Japan Tour. Great to see him get home for a few events. Uh, and he's gone even par through two rounds to miss the cut by two. So, well, yeah, he was the uh, he was the highest rated player in the world going into, uh, sorry, highest rated player in the world in this event going into the um, going into the week. So tough for tough for Quayle. A couple that I just wanted to mention: Lincoln Ty is is low key having a really good year. Um, mm. Two rounds of sixty four and a sixty six. In, and uh, his Friday round was one over par uh, 73. So, uh, sorry, two over par 73, which was rough for him. Um, Daniel Gale, T14, uh, which is good to see from Gailey, uh, starting to make things a little more consistent. Jaron Felton uh, gets a top 20, finish at T18. And then just a name that pops up on the leaderboard just very inconspicuously a lady by the name of kari webb finishing yes. it at t20 uh with rounds of 65 68 70 and 68 if you don't mind so um no shame in 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 losing or finishing lower than kari webb but uh certainly some names there that would be uh, yeah would would certainly be having a little look and going what's going on here how am i how am I losing uh, at the moment to to someone who is probably certainly at the back end of their career and playing exhibition golf essentially? So great to see her playing though. It's um, I think it just brings a crowd, uh, and people would just love to to get out there and and watch her play. Even if, as I say, she is sort of you know definitely just playing exhibition golf um, at the moment. She's the goat. She's a goat, Dred. Oh, she, is. she is for yeah. a long, long time. Um, and yeah, deservedly so. So great to see her in in fine touch. Um, remiss of us not to say just before we tie a neat little bow on TPS Victoria, a couple of couple of sixty twos out there this week, mm. uh, which did in fact um, break and then I suppose equal the course record. So Justice Bozio, the Phenomenally talented amateur from Queensland, um, and Johnny Lyris, if you don't mind, mm. fresh from his uh, fantastic performances over in Asian Tour Q School, uh, just post a sixty-two. So, yeah, a couple of sixty-twos in the field. Which, anytime you're going lower than sixty-three, that's um, yeah, that's super impressive. So, I just would, wanted to make sure of that. I I would like there to be uh, somewhere. Hopefully, on the leaderboard, it'd be ideal. But where it's mentioned why players were disqualified. Yes. Or withdrew. The BSQs at the yes. bottom. Yuna Takaki uh, from Japan DQ'd in round one without posting a score. And then amateur Jordan Hampton from the ACT DQ'd in round two without posting a score after posting a 73 in the first round. So I would... I just uh, look. I, you don't ever want to shit on someone, but um, yeah, it would just be nice to know why players were disqualified or withdrew, whether it was injury or, or whatever it might be. So, mm. anyway, all good. Fascinating, uh, Druids. I'm just rounding back. <laughs> this is okay. Oh, this is. I'm reticent to do it, but. I'm ready. I've just had a look at the uh, couple of the replies under Port's tweet about Jeffrey Guam. Okay. So j- j- just to, I mean, if you're listening to the podcast, we literally spoke about it probably 15 minutes ago, but just to rehash, Jeffrey Guam didn't play the TBS Victoria event at Rosebud. He was playing um, first grade pennants uh, at his club. Uh, he won 10 and 8. Uh, so phenomenal victory. Uh, the question was asked on Twitter by none other than Mike Clayton. Any reason he wasn't playing at TPS Rosebud? 
Ewan Porter says, I know the answer. I'm not allowed to comment publicly about it if that's any indication, which led you and I to wildly speculate that he'll be making his professional debut at the Vic Open at 13th Beach in two weeks' time. Yep. Alternate theory running in the replies. Okay. I'll give you one guess. What do you reckon people are suggesting? I don't know. No, just hit me. I'm not even going to guess. Signed for live. There's a couple of people suggesting that Jeffrey may be off to LIV, 54 of the best holes of golf. <laughs> be That's, great for him. I mean, huge payback, huge Jeff. God, that'd be great. I think what it's... What a story. Surely it's I think not. Surely it's very it's unlikely. Thing. I think it's very yeah, unlikely. Sorry. I mean, no disrespect to to, to Jeffrey. Um but I wouldn't suggest that he's hugely high on their list of recruits that they're going after. Um, no. as Patrick, also pa- strikes Patrick Reed about to to uh, have his approach shot. What were you saying on Jeffrey? Or oh, just strikes me as a type of kid who probably that's not his first jump. Not to mm. suggest that you really don't entirely never speak in absolutes, but mm. I don't know. He's such an immensely talented kid. I think he realizes that there's there's gains to be had around the world playing on tours, uh, you know, that play four days instead of three. Mm. Um anyway, fascinating stuff. I'm sure the speculation will continue wildly until such time as we have a concrete answer or bit of yes. news out of the Guan camp. Um Drudes, before mm. we turn our attention overseas uh, we head to the Cobram Baruga Golf Club mm-hmm. this weekend uh, for the TPS Murray River in honour of Jared Lyle. A fantastic event on the calendar. You'll be seeing a lot of yellow in the Murray River region this week. Yep. Uh, and if you remember correctly, this was the event where Hannah Green mm. won mm. And, and became, we just spoke about Minayun, uh, becoming the third female internationally to win a mixed gender event. Well, Hannah Green was the first. And yes. It was this event last year. So she is the defending champion. Uh, I'm reticent <laughs> reticent to give tips because albeit, you know, Dane Lawson certainly didn't disgrace himself, but uh, wasn't as close as I would have liked. So I'm not going to necessarily give a tip, but uh, I'm, I'm interested to see a number of people play. <laughs> Well, my, I, I tipped Micka and he finished third, so that was not too bad. Um, yeah, you've done well. I, I, I uh, Doug Klein, I'll give you him. Maybe I, I, I'll just give you straight out right, Doug Klein. Um, okay. Obviously, Securities Asian Tour card, so he can um, he can have my tip this week. Another very very competitive field, um, but just like the way that Doug's playing at the moment, Rory about to tee off. Uh, Pat Reed for those interested. Um, who have probably heard this already, but for your benefit, uh, put it to the back of the green. So it does have an eagle putt long range. Yucky. So McElroy on this hole, birdie par bogey in the first three rounds. So we don't like that. We want to at least be one of the first two. Rory pro- probably waited for at least five or six minutes on this tee box. Yeah. Where's it? He'll land? be thrilled about that. Where's it landed? He'll be- sit, sit. Oh, he's hit it in the water. No, he hasn't. Oh no, where is it? Has he? Oh, it's it's right. It was rolling to the water. Oh. He's Have too he strong. It? I don't know. I mean, he, he is strong. Oh no, sure. this could be sure. a genuine two shot swing. Oh, don't show us the fucking swing. Show us where the ball landed. <laughs> I'm more interested in the outcome, not the journey. If we could get eyes on. This is great radio too, by the way. <laughs> this is great radio. <laughs> Me watching Rory McIlroy. Oh, my word. That's funny. Okay, here we go. This angle. Jeez, he launches the ball, doesn't he? Yeah, he absolutely belts the cover off it. That's genuinely the problem here is that this is rolled out. Oh, there's a fucking photographer in the way. Look, it's rolled into the long grass, but I reckon it's either 
it's it's either definitely in the water or out of bounds. So just shot either way. That's what you're saying. Yeah. That's how I'm Excellent. looking at it right now. Anyway, we'll continue Excellent. to bring you uh, live updates as Pat Reed gets ready for his eagle putt. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? Uh, we should probably go to the PGA Tour only yes. because it's 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 finished. Um, we can probably talk about the TP World Tour event in just a moment. Uh, the Farmers Insurance, Tory Pines. Mm. Um, when we last when we last spoke, we thought it was a fait accompli that. John Rahm was going to wrap up his third victory of mm. 2023 inside the first month of the calendar year, just given his prolific record uh, at the course. But no, it was, in fact, uh, your man. My boy. <laughs> Max Homer. Uh, was it, is it a sixth? I think it's a sixth. PGA it's a six, is it? I think it's six. Well, I'm pretty certain it is because last time, this is this is also good radio and good research, last time... We spoke about him winning. I'm fairly certain he'd drawn level with Ricky Fowler. Six. Five. It is six. The sixth title. I also saw something outrageous. And this is this is good because I probably should wait until I have it in front of me, but I'm just going to go off the hip. Mm. Um, I think it was a stat like no one has won more on the PGA Tour in the last like 18 months than Max Homer. Well, like yeah, all those, three wins. All of those victories have come, you know, in the back, back half of his career. So, like, he's on a, he's on a heater. The, the guy's, I think, legitimately playing his way into a Ryder Cup. We got into a Prez Cup, and I think that was on mm. the button. And I think he'll be. Uh, I wouldn't suggest he be in the bottom four picked. I, I would think he's right on, right in calculations. Oh yeah, an increasingly important part of that American team for the Marco Simeone Golf Club in Rome. Well, he's so, playing. The lights out at the moment, isn't he? So, I mean, I I, do you think he's major material? I was thinking about this on the way home from work, and I was like, because John Rahm was should have won this tournament. Essentially, he was like he was leading for for such a long time, and or or was there or thereabouts, right? And it was like, well, it's just a you know to steal your term, a fait accompli that he was just going to go over the top and win. But Mm. I, I was wondering, I was like, is Max Homer? Is he major material? Like, will he win a major or is he going to be just one of those really perennial guys who wins 20 times on the PGA Tour? And that's putting him amongst some of the the very greats, but he's got six in three years, essentially. Patrick Reed has missed his eagle putt. He's got about four footer for birdie. Uh, I, I think it's entirely dependent. On course fit, okay. So I think I just just I oh, don't want to don't want to get banned from YouTube, but oh, I'll give you an update here. That. So give you an update here. In 2022 and 2023, Rory has put approach shots into the water from this same position, but the ball has stayed in bounds. It is in the field of play. It is on the red line, on the red out of bounds line. Okay. So we're not, we're not out of the woods. Okay. But so, okay. Anyway, push on. Sorry, Max Homer, major material. Yes or no? I think yeah. So I think it's entirely contingent on like course fit. I think he's absolutely got the game to win a major, mm-hmm. but when you're up against those guys that find an extra level within themselves. Um, it, it's it's there's got to be things going your way because mm. Matt like Max is a is a great player, but I don't think he's in the echelon. I know he's not in the echelon of like the top four or five players in the world, which mm. I think is where we always we always defer to to Rory, Ram, JT, you know, Cam Smith, Cam Smith when he's playing majors. So Max isn't there. So I mm. think. What I like about him is his is his win profile in the sense of he's won at Torrey Pines, he's won at Riv. Like, yeah, that's that's not a that's not an easy place to win a golf tournament. No. So he's not he's not bombing gouge, he's not cookie cutter, he's not looking for soft fairways. So I like that makes him versatile. That makes him more of an option at majors. Uh, I think it's just going to come down to course. So. Mm. 
I think the other thing is go, going for him, and you know, like I early days as as the bid is on this show is that I was very much get off Twitter and start practicing golf. <laughs> Um, and seemingly, as he has done less roasting of golf swings, um, he is seeming to win. So maybe you listen to the advice. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. But he's a genuinely likable dude too. Like he is part of that younger crop of players that actually gives a bit in the media. And, you know, he's not afraid to really say what's on his mind or he's he's kind of, you know, he he's a a likable character that the PGA tour has got going for him. And, you know, we were just talking about Jeffrey Guam before. I mean, Max Homer would absolutely be up the top of the list that, that Liv would be, would be trying to get in touch with surely. So you'd suggest, and I think Max would continue to laugh um, uh, in those conversations. He seems pretty, he does or die for the tour. So read just birdied 18. Yeah, I'm so equal with Raw's. Awful hat, Tan. Awful head in general. Um, to be fair, I mean, a playoff would be elite if, if they were walking the same <laughs> and then had to shake each other's hands at the end. We'll, we'll oh. get to we'll, I think we should. I think we should get to that after after this, so after yeah. the PGA Tour. Um, so just briefly working our way down the leaderboard, uh, we mentioned obviously um, Cole Marikawa played a lot of golf with Max Homer three of the four rounds. Good to see he's um, you know back there and thereabouts. Was a disappointing finish to the tournament of champions for him, but doesn't miss a beat. Does Colin um, remains uh, one of the best players in the world? I think as we've often mm. said, it's that last ten percent. It's the muscle between the ears for Colin now. Um, that will be purely the difference. Sungjae, great week for Sungjae four off the lead. Um, John Rahm. Disappointing two over in the final round to finish five off the lead. And then Jada. Mm. Um, Jada gets a top 10. I love yes. that for Jada. Yes. So, and he plays some pretty good golf. I was just going to say, if I could, if you'd indulge me for a moment to run through his, Please. Uh, his form. So uh, going back to the start of uh, the season at the Fortnite, missed the cut, uh, but then has gone on uh, T8 at the Shriners, T11 at the CJ, T21. At Mayakoba T16 at the Houston Open, missed the cut at the RSM Classic, uh, still shot one under par. Uh, the QBO, QBO shootouts are relevant. The American Express T18 and T7 at the Farmers Insurance. So definitely uh, trending in the right direction for Jason, which is nice to see because he's a dude that we all weren't really sure where everything was at. Uh, sorry, Rory just about to take his shot here. Jeez. Oh, oh, he's walking. He's walking after it. Oh, he's laid on, up. Ross. He's laid up. That's all right. Okay. I reckon he's gonna have like a hundred yards wedge. Just spin it, it back. Birdie. We've I've got one. I've got so much. Like so many people are texting me about this at the moment. I'm like, I'm busy. I'm doing my job. <laughs> yeah. Who does lighting up? I, there's, a, there's a really biggest part of me wants to see him wrap it up here. There's a really small part of me that wants to see him par. And yeah. <laughs> walk Go it back path. up 18. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see it. Love to see it. Um, Probably just a brief mention of the other. Oh, actually, no. Sorry. Sorry. Slick Dick Rick. Mm. Good week for Ricky Fowler. Yeah. Not going to say he's back. No. Hasn't no. say that. Clearly done some work on the swing. So mm-hmm. that's looking um, A, different, B, in my mind, better, more efficient. Um, so Ricky's in a little bit of touch. Interesting, like interesting four rounds, uh, even, even, five under, even to finish five under. So, mm-hmm. But he's at the right end of the leaderboard comparatively to where he's been. So that's all I had outside of the other Australians, which I'm happy to run through in a moment, unless you have some pressing matters from no. Farmers Insurance at Torrey Pines. So no, nothing major. Go the Aussies. Wonderful. Other Aussies in the field as I scroll. It's a pretty poor story because uh, I don't know that anyone else made the cut. No, I don't no, think so. They didn't. So missing the cut uh, was Aaron Badley, Cameron Percy, uh, Harrison Endicott, 
and young Cameron Davis. Cam Davis uh, was 11 Spin. over. Ooh. How close does he put it? 15 feet. Well, it's Downhill slider. Close enough. I would suggest we're going to a playoff. So would I. Well, hopefully. Jeez, 15 foot downhill slider. Any whom. <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, that's good gear. That's good gear. That's the farmer's insurance. We are entirely consumed yeah. um, by what's going on on the DP World Tour. Um, should we talk around this? Because I think um, probably just worth flagging the Australian performances. Um, primarily L Herbert, 16 under. Mm, who's really good in outright third presently. So maybe taking home a fair bit of cash, I would have thought. Uh, and as you said, really good, Sp- specifically today, 66. Mm. Um, so not too many better in the field than that. Stenson, 64. Reed, 65, ironically. That's a really good finish for uh, for Lucas Herbert. Good to see him back at the pointy end. Min Woo, uh, T13 at 11 under. Um, so he's a little way back, but he's had a good good little run in the Middle East in the last couple of weeks. Um, he'll be ruining an opening round 73 because he's gone 65, 71, 68. So. Yes. Good for Min Woo. Uh, Ryan Fox, obviously honorary Australian, nine under. He finishes in a tie for 20th. Uh, and as I just scroll down the remainder of the leaderboard, that is all. So... All roads lead to a playoff between uh, arguably um, the greatest nemesis, uh, or certainly in golf right now, maybe in the history of golf. Mm. It's 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 dirty. I um, think uh, I just uh, I had a um, I had a conversation that with with someone that was talking that was saying that they've lost. A bit of respect for Rory over the past little little while, which interesting. I, I kind of get the narrative depending on which side of the golf ledger you fall on. If you're very much pro live, then I'm sure you absolutely have. If you're kind of indifferent to it, like we've probably become, then I think I probably haven't lost really much respect for Rory. I feel sorry for him in a lot of ways. I think he's been thrown to the wolves by the tour in in terms of how you you need to stand up and be the ambassador for us, and he's almost had to to do it. Um, But, yeah, I mean, should we maybe touch on this week because that'll give us enough time to see Rory's putt and, I mean, who knows, are we going to pad out for a full 20 minutes while this playoff potentially goes on? Probably not. Um, Let's see. uh, So, obviously, the... The driving range, so it goes back further because Patrick Reed is is, is slash was suing um, Rory McIlroy for some comments that were made apparently, and is then he suing Rory or is Rory just being subpoenaed? Oh, I don't, I don't, I've it's got no idea. Ever he's um, suing, whatever. It's it's messy, right? And then Very. so then on the driving range, uh, Patrick Reed. I, comes think, over I think I think the context is important. Rory received the subpoena at like. 4 p.m. in the afternoon on Christmas Eve. Yeah, uh, yes. Which, this is uh, he was clearly pretty pissed off about. As you would be. As you mm. would be. Um, so, and then on the driving range, Rory's kind of mucking around with his track man. His caddy's there. Uh, Patrick Reed comes over, shakes caddy's hand, goes to shake Rory's hand. Rory doesn't want a bar of it. Patrick Reed kind of walks away and then flicks a four aces T at Rory McIlroy in one of the great child, marketing. in one of the great childhood dummy spits uh, ambush marketing of which we have done some of some of that when <laughs> we ordered that was one of our earliest marketing activities is ordering yeah. 500 T's Gen- and just leaving them on the tee box Rory's putting do you want me to talk you through it yeah please 15 foot downhill slider to win all en route get in the hole get in the hole get in the hole yes you fucking beauty. He's dropped it. Dropped a 15 footer downhill. Rory McElroy. Stick that right up your ass, Patrick. Yeah. You cheating prick. Patrick. You cheating prick. Goodness me. I wonder if Pat will shake his hand. 
after the uh oh I'll put it back on. I just closed it. Now nah, I'm putting it back on. Uh, he absolutely won't. What a part. Go and watch that's that. That's part. that's enormous. Um Yeah, sorry. Okay, so let's let's go give give us your thoughts on the <laughs> look the whole driving range thing. I I I kind of so I listened to Rory. I, there were also some comments of follow up from Pat Reed. I think it's like called him enormously immature or something like that. There was he was asked about it. Reed made some mm. further comments that kind of doubled down on obviously the motivation to throw a T at him. Um, I listened to Rory's presser day before I think the tournament where he was obviously asked about this specific incident. Uh, he said probably a couple of things that I thought were interesting and important. Um, first and foremost, he didn't recognize or feel like he'd been hit by and he didn't even realize that that T had been thrown in his general direction. So I was pretty unfazed by it. the part that I found most interesting. And to be fair, I resonated with the most. He essentially said like, why would, I want to shake his hand. Like I wasn't interested in shaking his hand and why would I be like, I think his his verbatim quote was, you can't pretend like nothing has happened. Mm. And I tend to agree. Like I, I don't really, for me, it was really awkward to watch the full length video in the sense of Reed's like walking along the range, trying to chat to people and trying to be all chummy mm. and, like it's a PR exercise. He knows that there's cameras on the range. He knows that every movement is watched when you get to tournaments of this level. So what's a good look for him? I'm just going to go and press the flesh and pretend like everything's sweet. But like, mm. I tend to agree. Like, mate, you sent me a subpoena on Christmas Eve at like 4 p.m. to my house I'm yeah. with my family. Like, why, why would I shake your hand? Yeah. I don't really want to talk. So like that action suggests to me that you don't really want to talk to me other than through our lawyers. So why, in fact, are you here trying to shake my hand? What What's the purpose? So, mm. like, I know all the live apologists, you know, were up Rory's ass about it and I, I, it's fine. Like, I get it. But I actually don't I know, think I, it has that much to do with – I think it definitely does have a lot to do with the whole fact that Patrick Reed has gone to live. But I think it's got more to do essentially with what you've outlined there in the subpoena – but also the fact oh, yeah. that, like, there's been, like, it's not like these guys have got a long ever. Like, no, Pat- Patrick no. Reed has a long standing history of alleged cheating, which we, we'll, I'm sure, we'll talk about the latest instalment of. But it's just, I, I feel like it. People that are simply viewing it as a black and white live PGA tour thing are probably yeah. not essentially painting the full picture. No, not at all. Not at all. And I mean, you look at the history in the Ryder Cup, like, yeah, particularly against each other. Um, yeah, it's, I didn't see much in it. Like, it was a guy clearly in a tournament environment where he feels a little uncomfortable. And, and that's the other thing. Like, I think he gives off this impression like he could give two shits what people think of him, which I think is the actual complete opposite. I think he's yeah. a terribly insecure person who does genuinely care what people think of him yeah and that's why he reacts like this that's why you know brandall's getting sued for like 450 million dollars <laughs> of saying a few you know editorial monologues on golf uh, Channel. Uh. like if you were completely comfortable with who you were you probably wouldn't even register that brandall had said the things he said yeah, like, they correct. weren't that bad no. like so yeah he's a horrifically insecure individual who is coming into an environment where He's not embraced like he is on his in his new place of work, mm. um, and clearly just struggling to find his feet. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't see. I mean, I didn't even know think that his actions were overly petulant. There, it was a bit silly, but like, I don't know. I'm a bit, I'm a bit done with it all now. Like, it yeah. will be what it will be. It'll either be resolved or it won't. But if we're gonna psychoanalyze every interaction at a range at this point forward where these players play alongside each other. Um yeah, I'd be I'd be probably become pretty tired of that. Yeah. And then obviously the, the the other string that got added to the bow was uh yesterday in yesterday's round that um Patrick Reed hit a hit his ball in got stuck in a palm tree 
this uh, I'm willing to talk about at al- al- allegedly uh, mm. called in a rules official was like, yeah, that's my ball stuck up there. Um, I can see the end of an arrow on it because I draw an arrow on my ball, <laughs> whatever. Sure. Um, I mean, if you watch the footage, I'm fairly certain it's not even the right tree that they're looking it's at. It's 100% not the right tree. So S- I saw secondly, some- secondly, sorry, secondly, no, and okay. my biggest point on this, if Patrick Reed is so certain that he's like, yep, that's my ball, why does the rules official need binoculars to then get out and actually see whether it's the ball? Like, surely you, you, you just go, yep, yeah, no, cool, that is, yep, that's the ball. Yeah, I just think it's a, another classic, classic Patrick Reed cheating case, and I'm more than happy to to say that it was. I'm just waiting to see if there's any inter- interaction between Rory and Pat Reed here, but wouldn't have thought. I'd, so. I'd like to get um, your thoughts on on what happened yesterday. Well, it stinks to high water, to be mm. honest. Like, there's a couple of things here. It 100 percent was the wrong tree. Like, it wasn't even the next tree. It was the tree after. So, it was two trees away from the tree that he alleges the ball was in. This is an unusual circumstance because we're talking about a ball becoming lodged in palm fronds some, you know, 10, 12 metres off the ground. So, that in and of itself I found difficult to believe was plausible until I actually saw. So, there was a a, was a great video yeah. during the rounds of, like, they zoomed in and there was a... There was Balls deluxe yeah. in these palm fronds. So this is my other thing. Like, it's not as if there's one. It's like, yeah. how can you actually tell that is yours? There's multiple, yeah. The other balls. Yeah. And so then, um, ironically, watched a great video about an hour before we jumped on. Uh, Brandel. What do you reckon Brandel <laughs> led off with today uh, on the Golf Channel? <laughs> well, I saw the video of the monologue, but I haven't listened to it. Oh, uh, brilliant. Like, just the level... Like he's he's going into the detail around. Okay, let's take a look at that course. Um, it's fair to say the majority of players play with a Pro V One Titleist ball. Yeah. Um, given the demographic of people who play that course outside of the professional tournaments, it would be fair to say that the majority of the balls in those palm fronts probably were Pro V Ones. Yeah. So there's another point of difference. And then Brando goes to the length. Probably not Brando. Obviously, someone out the back in the production team at Golf Channel. They've um, they've. I think the technique is called shadow spotting, right? When you do like you slow it down frame by frame, but obviously, rather than you've kind of like in the background, you've got the normal resolution shot, but they've got a section, like a small circle that's zoomed in, and it's like it's illuminated, and the rest of the background is kind of like out of focus so it's like a zoomed in right. area where they've they've zeroed in on the ball and they're tracking it frame by frame showing that it doesn't land in that tree so that like brandel has got into work today and he said <laughs> drop what you're doing <laughs> yeah yeah guys prioritize we're gonna line this fucker up and nail him <laughs> and they, he's literally done like a two and a half minute the shadow spotting it was outstanding mm. so like it's just at some point, this is what I find remarkable about Pat Reed is like it's so brazen. Mm. Like whether it's something like that, whether it's improving his lie, um, you know, with his clubs, whether it's brushing sand, you know, mm. from behind his ball in a bunker, these aren't small things. Like to be fair, I, I would suggest that given how closely you are watched from a television camera perspective in the professional game. Now, there probably isn't an easy way to cheat, but I'm sure there's easier ways than the ones he's choosing. Yeah. Like, they're just brazen. And yeah. it, it, it's remarkable that he just, it's like, it's like this distorted reality theory that he he just doesn't, he either doesn't see that what he's doing is wrong or he doesn't care. Doesn't care, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't know because he, as I said, I think he definitely cares what people think about him, but that's doesn't really marry up with what he's doing because there's only one outcome of what people will think of you if you continue to act the way you're acting. So I find it really confusing, to be honest. Like the first the the, the time with the sand, I was like, that's weird. Like you must have known you did that. And then the yeah. time when he was 
you know, what do you get there? Like a the three, three wood driver out yeah. and place it behind, you know, the board to push the, the rough down and then went back and changed it to a wedge. Like, what, what are you yeah. doing, mate? Yeah. But this, like, how many times do you have to see? It's not the same thing, but it's a pattern of behavior. Of course. Before it's like, this guy's just off his head. Like, well, my last comment on, on Patrick Reed, like, it is unfortunate that it's like this because he is an immensely talented player, right? Like his short game yeah. is arguably one of the best in the world. He's a major champion. He's won a he's won a green jacket, right? And unfortunately, his legacy is the, is that he will go down as as a cheat. Like that's what people will remember him as, and mm. that's very like that's very sad in a lot of ways. So mm. that's my closing argument on, on Patrick Reed. So. Because we're closing, we're closing in on the hour mark, and we've blown our time again. You tell me, you didn't want to talk about the Allen Water Medal tonight? <sighs> I don't care. Or the spin camp that we held in Sydney. We didn't get, <laughs> we didn't go over to India. We held, we flew all the spinners into Sydney and held a spin camp in Sydney. We're not doing twenty yeah. minutes at the back end last That's week. Good gear. We're not good like gear. last week. So. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'm glad that Rory got it done in regulation. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's good. Did he give it? Oh, obviously, I'm about to um, just immediately get off this and go searching for the clip, but was yep. there a bit of emotion? A bit of a fist pump? Yeah, oh a, yeah. Big fist pumps. Yeah, yeah. And then they he, just they just cut to the... Uh, I miss, obviously missed the interview, but um, they just cut to the vision of Pat Reed into the, in the scorer's tent and he got up and pretty quick walk out. So that was good right. to see as well. So, he knew. Anyway. Raws on you. Yeah, anyway. oh, absolutely he knew. So, yeah, it's good kit. All right, mate. Pleasure as always. Plenty coming your way in the next couple of weeks. All the best for the players at Cobram Baruga this week for the TPS Murray River event in honour of Jared Lyle. We'll look forward to being back in your ears next Monday night.